starting in the late 1960s, the Ontario government was looking into developing a new type of metro system. The technology would use smaller trains and a smaller track gauge with elevated guideways powered by electric overhead wires. This was dubbed the Intermediate Capacity Transit System, or ICTS. The ICTS was to act as an alternative to traditional metro systems like the Toronto Subway, which opened in March 1954, and the Montreal Metro Gadget Bond, which opened in October 1966. The system was proposed to have the ability to operate automated trains, drastically reducing the cost of operations. Fast forward to the late 1970s, the Ontario Transportation Development Corporation, later rebranded to the Urban Transportation Development Corporation or UTDC, revised the concept for the ICTS system with steel rails and a magnetic propulsion system instead of the overhead wires. By the early 1980s, after rigorous testing and debugging, the UTDC was ready to bring the system to market, where contracts were signed with Vancouver's BC Transit and Toronto's TTC on May 29, 1981 and Detroit followed suit on August 5th. In October 1983, the ICTS's first vehicle, TTC's 3000, was rolled out of the Millhaven plant and delivered to Toronto by April 1984. After numerous delays, the Mark I started service on the Toronto RT in March 1985 as the first ITS system in service. The Vancouver Skytrain, the second system powered by ICTS technology, opened officially on December 11, 1985 for the Expo 86 Fair near Main Street. The Mark I cars were substantially smaller than other heavy rail vehicles with a length of 41 feet and identical width and height measurements of 8 feet. The cars travel at a maximum operating speed of 80 km per hour, weigh 15 tons, and have a capacity of 80 passengers. The cars were powered by UTDC GTO VWF traction motors, which are best known for making whining sounds when departing and arriving at a station. Here's a few samples. Despite their smaller size, the Mark I's have several advantages over their larger counterparts. The aluminum car body was designed with extruded elements that allow for a unique welding technique inside the chassis. This reduces grinding on the exterior body panels and therefore reduces wear and tear. The Mark I's use bogies with steering axles which wear less than other heavy rail metros. Because of these features, the Mark I's were praised for producing a quieter ride than other legacy systems. Uh, just a side note, I don't know if people in the 80s had hearing problems or just enthused by the new trains and system, but at least now, the trains are not not quiet at all, especially when the wheels constantly grind on the rails. Very quiet trains, indeed. The Mark 1s initially came with carpeted floors and door buttons when they first entered service, but were removed in 1992 for sanitary reasons and issues of maintenance. Like most new technologies, the ICTS had early teething problems in the first months of service. These bugs were later patched, and the cars have operated reliably ever since. The Mark 1s quickly made a name for themselves becoming the face of modern Canadian technology at the time, and also the face of the Expo 86 Fair. The original batch of Mark 1s arrived in 1984, 
and were numbered 001 to 056. The first units delivered were used for demonstration runs and testing before the system's inauguration. The second batch of Mark 1s arrived the following year and were numbered 061 to 118. Both of these variants look virtually the same with no visual differences between them. In 1991, a third Mark I order arrived on the system, numbered 121 to 136, which came with visual quirks. Unlike the original units, they lacked the emergency front doors on the front end of the units, which were covered by an aluminum plate and featured a single front window. The cars also lacked the cheek and dents of the 1985 and 86 cars. It was heavily rumored that the 1991 trains were from a cancelled ICS system in Italy. However, these rumors are not yet confirmed. Unfortunately, after this order, the UDDC ceased operations in 1991 and was merged into SNC Lavalin, which was later merged into Bombardier in 1998. The final order of Mark 1s arrived in 1995 and were numbered 137 to 156. These units had a slightly different interior with more grab rails and brought back the emergency front door at the front end externally. These trains would be the last Mark 1s built and the only Mark 1s built by Bombardier. Meanwhile, across the continent, Detroit received their Mark 1s in 1986 and opened their system in 1987 as the last new system to order Mark 1 trains. Despite their success, the cars suffered from issues that would be exposed as the cars aged. Well, besides the noise. The Mark 1 smaller frame made rides uncomfortable during rush hour, with the cars quickly getting crowded as the train traveled down the expo line. Another issue with the units in later years was with the doors, which were notorious for repeating its closing procedure multiple times, causing minor delays and frustration to passengers and crews alike. The trains initially ran in four-car sets for the majority of their service lives, but as the system increased in ridership, this was changed to the Mark 1's running in six-car sets from 2009. The cars ran in this configuration from 2009 to just recently when some Mark 1 trains returned to four-car sets. For some reason. Uh, yeah, uh, not the best idea, guys. Uh, especially with the lines getting more overcrowded. Just, no, not the best idea, guys. Vancouver's Mark 1s were painted into multiple different liveries over the years. Originally, they were painted in their most recognizable scheme, the Expo livery, a white base color with red and blue striping along the sides. In 2001, a portion of the original fleet was repainted into the sweep livery introduced with the Mark 2s, which replaced the striping with two streaks along the sides in TransLink's primary color scheme. By 2013, the original Mark 1s were showing their age and desperately needed refurbishment. Refurbishment, and that is exactly what the trains would get. Between 2013 and 2017, the original batches ordered in the mid-1980s were refurbished and repainted into the charcoal sweep livery externally and repainted the interior door panels from red to white. The door panels were repainted on a few of the cars, but the majority kept their red door panels. And for good reason. I mean, look at this. Look at how ugly and depressing the white interior cars look. The red ones just look so much better and less depressing than this. Anyway, the 91 and 95 units were not repainted, retaining the Expo and Sweep liveries respectively as of the production of this video. The cars can often be seen sprinting along the rails on the Expo line, and very rarely the Millennium line transporting commuters between the Tri-Cities, Surrey, and downtown Vancouver.
as instrumental as they are, they could not escape the eventual fate that all vehicles face. Retirement. TransLink has started plans to replace the Mark 1s as they approach 40 years of active service with the Mark 5, a modified Mark 3 unit with several differences, including a new seating layout to reduce overcrowding. The Mark 5 is scheduled to start service in late 2023 as the Mark 1s have already proposed dates for their retirement. The original cars are slated to be retired by 2026, with the 91 and 95 variations replaced around the same time or earlier. I swear, this will not age poorly. The Vancouver Mark 1s currently have the most successful career, made an impact with the local community, and showcased their endurance over their careers on the system. The Mark 1 service life with other customers, however, has not been as illustrious. The choice Mark 1s have been suffering from low ridership from the city's long decline and are still limping about the rails to this day, likely to slowly rot until the end of time. The original Toronto Mark 1s currently run on the Toronto RT, however the system has suffered from constant neglect and is the only ICS system to be manually operated. The system is scheduled to close in 2023 with all of the units immediately retired and most likely scrapped. Well that was sad. The Mark 1s have played a major role in maximizing ICTS technology and an influential impact on the network. The cars will always have a place in the history of the Metro Vancouver Transit Authority and the SkyTrain network, from the system's early beginnings to the present day. 